Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Bless amen. God, amen. amen. Oh, I always like to start with hymns, praising our Father, because you know why? He is worthy, that's why he's worthy. Open up your red hymnals to 446, 446, for time's sake, for time's sake, what we're going to do is we're going to sing, uh, we're going to skip verse 2, we're going to skip verse 2, so for time's sake, we're going to skip verse 2. Here we go. All my life long I had panted for a drug from some clear spring that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst I felt within. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has prayed. Jesus satisfies my longings through his blood I now am saved. For I was and sought for riches, something that would satisfy. But the dust tell you folks that there is a fountain. There is That's a fountain. Right. 222 two, two in your red hymn books, please. 2, 2, and 2 in your red hymn books today. All right, for time's sake, we're going to skip a few verses. What we're going to do is that what we're going to sing is verse 1, verse 2, and verse 5. 1, 2, and 5. All right, now pay attention to the words now. All right? I know we don't have your electric guitar and your percussion drums to make you pay attention and go to the mood and to start crying and worshiping Jesus. Look, man, just pay attention to the words and not the devil's music so that you can glorify God. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that blood Lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, lose all their guilty stains, and sinners plunge beneath that blood, lose all their guilty stains, but dying 
in your white hymn book, page 57 in your white hymn book. You can tell he really worked hard on that prayer. It's a good prayer. <laughs> it's a really good prayer. <laughs> All right, page 57 in your white hymn book. You just made me create a sermon out of that. <laughs> uh, reminds me of Chug. I don't know why it just came up in my mind, but that brother, I mean, when he prays, man, it's just pretty similar to it. That guy. All right, anyways, page 57. What we're going to do is that we're going to uh, skip verse 2 for time's sake. Verse 2, we're going to skip. Here we go. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. The living Christ came in Jesus above. If Jesus walks close to my side, living my faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in His great love, yes, in His great love, from all hearts. away beyond that blessed heavenly shore living by faith yes, living by faith you meant every word in that song because a lot of you are going through that right yeah going through attacks so you know what you're doing 
You're not trying to see a sign or something like that. You're just walking by faith. That's it. That's all you can do. All right, so yours truly will be doing all the uh, talking today. So hold on one second. So I finished the new bulletin. I will email it to you as soon as the church service is over. Uh, I just want to say real quickly if our, uh, you can uh, talk to me if you have questions. If our uh, treasurer can talk to me about putting the tithing progress, uh, tithing progress report. My Korean accent of the R with the L is just mixing in, so sorry about that. I almost said progress, you know. Progress. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, true Korean. He's been with us for years. So, so. Okay, so uh, our new bulletin, if any of you are not part of the list, if you're going to be a part of our church and you want to keep tabs too, please give me your email. That way I can include you in the list. I apologize to those online. Every time they hear that, they ask me for that. I'm sorry, it's not for you. It's for people in our church. So, yeah, because there are personal issues that you don't want. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, volunteers church programs needed at the first page so a lot of you are participating now in volunteering I really appreciate that the Lord he's you got to realize this church service is becoming enjoyable Amen. to people in this church and even online all right it is when everyone's putting heart and soul together not just pastor so I really want to thank you for that so there's street breach and visitation or taking the tracks and new convert materials you can pass out volunteering to take care of the kids in the nursery, singing specials, or anyone who wants to teach or preach the Bible here on this pulpit. All right, so it's right here on the list. Progress of last month, it's listed right here. 300 tracks, six new convert materials, three, so that's about uh, six Bibles taken. Internet ministry, 6,280 comments, 4,243 subscribers, 12,601 shares. Remember, we're talking about only progress of last month. Nine souls saved, amen. So we had, I remember one that I led to the Lord at street preaching. And then we had a, other more at visitation. And inside the church too, even in this church. And then uh, prayers answered was for Brother Francis's surgery. So it was successful, much better than expected actually. So the Lord answered that. Other fruits included, we had several new visitors. We had members volunteering to sing, participate in soul winning, and also even getting disciples. So praise the Lord for that. All right, also it lists the tithing progress right here, where your money is going, how much is spent, etc. Memory verses, you'll be reviewing again Psalms 1, all right? So today's review. Lord willing, next week, Psalms 12, we'll be memorizing that whole chapter. Great verse on the preservation of your King James Bible. That's a famous chapter for Bible believers, so memorize that. Uh, let's see, total monthly progress. Again, if you read three chapters of the Bible, just 15 minutes of prayer and three tracks per day that you get from the table, then this, then the total monthly progress will be listed out on how much you could have done. The total progress of 2017 now. So assuming you started ever since January, what you would have accomplished by the end of the year, just your Bible reading, prayer, track passing, attending church, and memorizing verses, just an average of 10 members would have accomplished this much. We, they would have read a fourth of their Bible. An average of 10 members would have spent nearly 12 to 20 hours of winning lost souls. San Jose Bible Baptist Church would have prayed over 210 hours for God to save lost souls, meet the needs of fellow Christians, support over 50 ministers and ministries, and so much more. San Jose Bible Baptist Church would have passed out over two, two to 3,000 tracts San Jose Bible Baptist Church has led around 58 to 60 souls to salvation within four months. That's pretty good. San Jose Bible Baptist Church has tithed definitely over $15,000 to the Lord. San Jose Bible Baptist Church would have memorized one entire Bible doctrine and even one entire Bible chapter. And this does not even include the fruits from answered prayers, internet ministry results, and personal testimonies of people here. Page 3 and page 4 is your Bible reading chart, track chart, and prayer chart, Monday through, uh, excuse me, Sunday through Saturday. Since there's a fifth week, it, it's right down here, all right, week number 5, since there's a fifth week in this month. All right, the prayer list, so obviously this is going to be private, so don't worry, this won't be publicly posted online, all right.
Did I miss any essential, important prayer request or anything in the bulletin or announcements? Okay, so announcements is Monday Bible study at Glory's house, 8 p.m. We'll be doing that. And then we'll have street preaching this coming Sunday, same spot, same spot at 1030 in front of the Chevron gas station. All right, no questions? All right. Man, I'm doing all the camera talking today. Now I'm going to sing you all a special. <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant, where the Most High dwells. And only the High Priest could enter therein to offer up a sacrifice for atonement of sins. But the veil was rent in an instant, revealing that holy place. For on a hill nearby, on a rugged cross, justice met grace. Now I can go to the holy of holies. I can need petitions known I can go to the holy of holies and although I'm such a wretched man because of God's redemption plan I can boldly approach the throne the blood of sacrifices it is no more required for the blood of Christ, the spotless lamb, he completely paid the price. And now the sacrifice of worship will open heaven's door, allowing us to enter in the presence of the Lord. can kneel and make my petitions known. I can go to the holy of holies. And although I'm such a wretched man, because of God's redemption plan, I can boldly approach the throne. can kneel and make my petitions known. I can go to the holy of holies. And although I'm such a wretched man, because of God's redemption plan, I can boldly approach the throne. I can boldly approach the throne, the throne. Amen. Thank God I can go to the Holy of Holies. Amen. Thank God. All right. Brother Daniel, would you do the honors of taking up the Lord's offering for us? Thank you, brother. And then if you can ask God's blessing upon the church service with a word of prayer as well. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for bringing us here. Dear Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for all of our sins. And through you, we can only get to heaven. Uh, please bless.
bless the offering and let it be used for good things and may it, may it just just bless the world and please uh, pray upon or please look over the pastor and make sure that uh, his message gets through. Yes, God. Amen. 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 Nehemiah, please. Nehemiah. Book of Nehemiah. Lord, let upon my heart again one more time to do without notes. Some of you are like saying, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, open your Bibles, please, to the book of Nehemiah. And we're going to look at chapter 4, please. Nehemiah, chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. A lot of you are being under attack. Amen? Yeah, amen. Amen. So, a lot of you are under attack. I want to rev up and fire up your spirit, shall we? And people online as well. Uh, I can't believe how many are asking about suicide. So everyone's going through tough times. Let me tell you something. The devil, that's what he wants you to do. That's he wants right. you to drop dead. Yep. He wants you to quit. He wants you to not come to this church anymore. He wants you to unsubscribe from our internet. He doesn't want you to pass out tracts, do yep. street preaching, visitation. He doesn't want you to read the Bible. That's what the devil wants you to do because he wants to tire you out. More that way you're too tired to do something for God. And there's Sanballat. There's Tobiah. There they are laughing and cackling at you. Look at chapter 4 and verse 7. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night why? Because of them. <laughs> That's why we do it. Let's also look at chapter 5. Chapter 5. Verse 1, And there was a great cry of the people and their wives against their brethren the Jews. For there were that said, We are sons and our daughters are many. Therefore we take up corn for them that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses, that we might buy corn because of the darth. There were also that said, We have borrowed money for the king's tribute, and that upon our lands and our vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children, and lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. That's what you're feeling, right? With suffering, with under attack. You know what you should be doing? Verse 6, and I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. That's what you should be doing. You should be angry that the devil's attacking your life. You should be angry that some brother and sister in Christ is crying in the room and broken hearted. You should get angry when someone is coming to our church and trying to attack our church, Amen. pretending to be one of us and pretending to be one of us online. You should be angry about that. You know why? Because you need to realize that enemy wants you to break down and quit. And instead of getting panicked, fearful, and timid, that should get you more riled up. Yeah. That someone attacked your loved one. That someone attacked your life. You should get angry and you should fight back. Amen. Look at chapter 6. Let's say these enemies, they want to troll. They want to creep inside our churches. These people say, what? These people, some, some guy who, some, who locks himself up in a bedroom or in a basement, and then because he lives in there so long, his skin is so white, you can't tell anymore if he's a human or a ghost. And then you get one of these people saying, I want to interview you. I want to debate you. Hey, why won't you answer my call? Look at chapter 6, verse 1. 
Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had bid, builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem the, sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the place plain of Ono. Oh but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times, bunch of trolls, yes. four times after this sort. And I answered them after the same manner. Good. Let's look at these three passages here on how the devil's attacking your life our church, and even people online. This sermon is for all of you Bible believers out there, and even Bible-believing pastors, missionaries, and churches who are about to throw in the towel. May today's sermon bless your life. God, my Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away my sins because I am wicked and I deserve hell without your righteousness, without God's mercy. Give it to me today, Lord, because not because I deserve it, but because your glory deserves it. You deserve the glory of people worshiping you, keeping the fight for you, attacking these enemies, these enemies who blaspheme your name, who give a wrong picture of what you teach in the Bible. And Heavenly Father, it's now more than ever that Bible believers need to stand up together and be pumped up, fired up to attack the gates of hell. Fill within me Holy Spirit power in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's look at chapter 4. Chapter 4. But it came to pass, and when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. That's what's going to happen. You know why Satan's attacking this church now? You know, uh, back when I was backsliding, back when I wasn't coming to church, back before I was saved, when I was lost in sin, I didn't sense this much spiritual pressure, this spiritual attack that I never felt before in all my life. And now when I'm serving God, I'm getting all this pressure, this attack, and I, I wonder why. It's very easy, because you just built a great wall, and that enemy is angry at you. Yeah. See, you weren't building a wall. You were lazy. You were on the ground, drinking God knows what, looking God knows what, smoking God knows what, looking at God knows what, doing something, saying something, God knows what, wicked on the ground, you built no house, no wall, so you left an open field for Satan to just have his way with the city and with your land. But now that you start to build up a wall, yeah. Satan's looking at that and he says, I can't go over and attack his mind and his heart anymore with the same temptations, the same attacks, the same amount of sins anymore. Yeah. He's building a protective hedge. I better knock it over before he builds it higher and you know when we start to get people in our church and we start to get people saying thank you pastor Kim I got saved online and we start to see people getting saved on the streets and on their houses outside and we start to see new people coming to this church and getting baptized new people participating in the online ministry new people saying thank you I, I just want a soul today thank you because of your videos we're going out soul winning thank you I done street preaching thank you I, sw I threw away my ESV and switched to the King James Bible Amen. thank you so much I don't listen to that garbage music Music anymore. Thank you so much that you put me in the right path of right doctrine where I don't believe that stupid post-tribulation rapture, Amen. that stupid Amen. replacement Amen. theology, that stupid anti-dispensational doctrine, that dumb Calvinism. I thank you so much for that. I switch to become a Bible-believing, dispensational, King James-only Christian. And when the devil sees that, not just in this location, but he starts to see one at Canada, and then he sees another where somewhere at Germany and then he sees somewhere there at the Marshall Islands and somewhere there at Norway that he thought he blinded the people really well over there and then Japan he thought he blinded really well but then he started to see people doing that and then he started to see people in South America doing that and then state after state and then you got like three or five somewhere at Arizona who don't go to that nonsense church over there and then because why they want a dispensational King James only Bible, Bible believing church they don't want to go to some post-trib replacement theology other kind 
kinds of churches. They don't want to go to those kind of churches. And when the devil sees that, he's realizing, this is why I have to attack Pastor Kim right now. That's why I have to attack certain people in this room right now. That's why I have to close down San Jose Bible Baptist Church right now. That's why I have to tempt, put wrong thoughts into people's minds online, make them unsubscribe, make them post false videos against this ministry. And I got to start doing that. That way people don't see the truth anymore. Amen. And that's what Satan's doing. He's wroth. He took great indignation and he's mocking them. Right? You see that? As soon as you came to this church, what happened to your best friend and your family? You know, my husband, my wife, you know, what happened to these people? They mock you. Oh, why do you go to that church? Why, why do you pray? What, what is this nonsense? My religion is fine. What, you don't like my church that I'm going to? What in the world? I mean, you start to see that. You start to see people posting videos about, oh, San Jose Bible Baptist Church, BBC International, or Gene Kim, you know. Oh, that guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That guy's a racist. Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking He doesn't know any Bible. That guy knows too much Bible, so he doesn't have much love. That guy, he does, you know, you see this kind of stuff, people mocking. People mocking. And you know what it should do? What it should make you do is that it should make you even more riled up to stand up for the truth, for the Word of God. Yeah, this, is, this is not to say it's a time for you to get angry at your loved one, at your family member, at poor blind lost souls who don't know any better. The anger should turn toward the gates of hell because those gates of hell have demonic spirits that are blinding your lost loved ones and those poor souls around the world online who don't know any better. And you should feel more grief for them, more love for them, more pity for them, and you should get more angry at the devil, at Beelzebub, at Lucifer, at the gates of hell, at those legion, at Apollyon. You got to get angry at demonic spirits, and you got to realize that I got to stand for Jesus Christ, and I got to go out soul winning. I got to keep yeah. praying on my knees. I can't quit coming to this church now. I can't quit teaching or preaching the truth online. It may be controversial but I can't stop now because the devil knows the devil knows that if we hold back and if we calm ourselves down he accomplishes his goal that wall is not gonna get any higher Amen. you know what you should do when Satan knocks one brick off of your wall you should get upset and put two bricks on top of that say you're gonna knock one brick and then he knocks another brick you put three bricks he knocks out three bricks you put in four bricks you say I can do this all day long there you go. He goes like this, you go, I can do this all day long. I can do this all day long. And then maybe, maybe he'll start to lay off on you because he realizes, you know, if I add more suffering, he's going to do more That's spiritual right. things for God. Amen. You know what, I'm going to back away a bit. That way he doesn't have to get more fired up because I'm afraid what he's going to do. Because that's what happened to the Christians at the early centuries, have they not? When they butchered their children, tortured their wives and their husbands, crucified them on crosses, burnt them at the stakes, and that Catholic Inquisition tortured people on the rack, burnt them at stakes, took, uh, ripped off the babies from pregnant women's stomach, threw them to the pigs. You know what happened? Bible-believing Christianity stood even more powerful than ever before. Amen. That's what happened. So you know what you should do? You should get more riled up about standing for the Lord Jesus Christ and then standing for the truth and proclaiming nothing but the truth and say, God, I don't care what people think or what people say. I'm going to say, preach, and stand for the truth. Amen. If, if persecution made Bible-believing Christians even more powerful, we got to do the same. You know what Satan's greatest, greatest weapon was to kill all of our churches? It's Laodicean comfortableness. Right. It's when you don't get what you want to please the lust of your flesh and your worldly desire. And he won that way. There's a famous Christian who was, went through tremendous torture in the communist persecutions in prison. And when he came to live in freedom in America, you know what he said? He said, Satan's attack of being comfortable is much harder than me being tortured for Jesus Christ. You know why? Because Satan's giving you something that will entice your lust. You know what we ought to be doing? We ought to respond with more fervency, fire, and zeal under persecution. 
Verse 2, and he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break it down their stone wall. Look at that. They're saying, oh, that wall is really small. You know, you only, you only read this amount of chapters of the Bible. Oh, come on. You never even led a soul to salvation. You know, you skipped church again. You only came to church that one time. You know, th the church, look at the amount of people. They're so small. Look at the online stuff. You're not getting enough views or enough subscribers. I mean, look at that. It's a small wall. Look how small you are. See, you look like a fringe, a little strange cult. You know, no one's going to listen to you. Look at you. You're so weird already in front of your loved ones and family members. If that which a fox goes up upon your small little wall, it will topple down. Right? Satan's doing that in your mind, right? He is tempting you and making you feel guilty about your sins, your backslidden condition, the amount of labor you pulled hard for Jesus Christ, making you feel like it's small, it's little, it's not much, and that's how the devil's going to get the victory. And what you need to do is that you need to build that wall a little higher. That's what you need to do. Amen, Let me ask you this question. Why would Satan put those thoughts into your mind if he really thinks that little wall is really a little wall? Why would Tobiah mock this group of people if it's just a little wall. If it's just a little wall, why would we have people trolling us online and trolling us coming inside our church? If we're just such a small work in ministry, why else would, st would these preachers who have thousands of people start to criticize us? Why would these people, why in the world would your family member and your loved one get mad at you for attending San Jose Bible Baptist Church rather than the Buddhist temple down the street or some Catholic church over there or some Church of Latter-day Saint next door or some Assembly Hall of Jehovah Witness? Why would, they, why would they get mad at you to come to this small little church if this small little wall is not a big deal at all? Why would they get mad? You know why? Because that small thing, so-called small thing, is not really small. It's the threat to the devil's eyes. So you should get motivated. We should let, lift up our hands and clap and praise the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. that a small work like this has seen hundreds, yeah. over a thousand souls saved. We've seen thousands of subscribers online. We've seen thousands of tracts passed out. We've seen hundreds of thousands around the world hearing Bible-believing truth. We should thank God that God can use a small thing yeah. to do something great and big for his glory. Amen. Thank God I'm a small little stone. You know why? Because it's enough to take down Mr. Goliath out there. Yeah. You Goliaths, you guys can get mad at us all you want. You can troll on us. You can criticize us. You can mock us. You can put me on a shelf and pretend I don't exist. But that little stone, if God Almighty is in it, we got four more smooth stones in our pouch and we're going to slay you, Goliath. Amen. We're not afraid. We got God on our side because He is our rock. He is our salvation. So you know when Satan attacks your life? Don't you dare think that your work is small. Don't you dare think that your life is so spiritually little for God. Don't you dare think that this is a small church. Don't you dare think this is a small work. Don't you dare think that when you just prayed a couple of minutes, that that was a small thing. Don't you dare think that because Satan knows that that little wall is going to get bigger. That's why. I mean, if it's such a small thing, then why bother attacking you, right? Why bother tempting you? He's doing it because he knows what's going to happen. Now look at chapter 7. Excuse me, chapter 5. I was reading chapter 5, excuse me. Verse 1, And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. For there were that said, We are sons and our daughters are many. Therefore we take up corn for them that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses that we might buy corn because of the dark. There were also that said, We have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. How many of you are feeling that? How many of you feeling like that, oh, we just mortgaged our home? Oh, you know, we don't have enough money in our account to take care of our food, to take care of our security for the future. What are we going to do? How are we going to raise a family? What, what am I going to do? I'm under bondage. You feel like under bondage, right? 
You feel like under bondage. And when suffering is happening in your life, and even in this church, maybe in this church there's, a bunch, there's bondage going on. There's suffering going on. And what you need to do is that you need to look at verse 6, and you need to, say, and you need to be angry. This is not okay. There is a time and place to, be, to cry over a loss of a loved one, for example. It's not a time, obviously, when your finances and you lost a job. It's obviously not a time where you feel like that you can't naturally cry. Obviously not. There's a time and place for everything. But you got to realize you can't stay like that 24-7. If you're done crying, you know what you need to do? You need to wipe the tears off of your eyes, finish crying. If you're going to cry, cry all you want right now. Scream as loud as you want right now. I mean, I did that before. I tried to find a solitary place somewhere so that no one sees me. I rolled up all the windows and I just go, ah, like that. And then once you cry out and pray and then pour out what your flesh is complaining to the Lord, after you do all that, wipe the tears, get back, get up on your feet, Pick up some tracks and go lead a soul to Jesus Christ. And get, to, get drag your car. After you cry today, Sunday morning at your bed, wipe those tears off of your face, put on your Sunday best, go to church, and give God the glory. That is the time that you need to get angry at the devil. You need to get angry at Satan. You need to get angry at your flesh. This flesh, yeah. man, you want to serve God, but this flesh is bondage, is it not? We saw in Nehemiah, it is bondage. It wants to make you, it wants to isolate you from the brethren who can pray for you and encourage you. It wants to isolate you from singing. It wants to isolate you from getting something online. It wants to isolate you from the Bible. Right, that preach. flesh is bondage. You you need to get angry at that flesh. If that flesh doesn't feel good, make it feel worse. Say, you want to feel like this and make it feel worse by reading the Bible, by praying, and then coming to church. And you'd be surprised, it might feel good sometimes when you do that. Get mad at that flesh. Get mad at the world. When that world, man, it mocks Jesus Christ and that those worldly pleasures start to glimmer in front of your eyes and the world tries to pull you away from the spiritual world, you need to bite back against the world and start to abstain from all worldly lusts and immerse yourself and saturate yourself in the Word of God and in a church. Don't go to the world, go to church today. That's what you should be doing. Stop sing, singing that worldly garbage and come to church and sing a hymn or come up here and sing a special. Some of you don't mind making yourself look like a fool at some karaoke bar, but you don't want to lift up your voice for Jesus Christ right here. You know, that, that kind of worldly junk has stolen you. That worldly stuff has stolen your mind. You need to get mad at the world and bite back against the world. You need to fight back against the world. Man, I'm angry today. I am angry at Satan. I am angry at my flesh. I am angry at this world. I want to serve God and love Him and fall in love with Him the way that I'm supposed to Amen. be doing and serve Him the way I'm supposed to be doing and be pure and holy, body, mind, and spirit the way that He deserves. Boy, I'm angry at this flesh, this world, and the devil out there. Why would this be a time that I start to think only of myself and start crying and be miserable? Oh, no one's listening to me. Everyone's attacking us. Oh, we're small work. Oh, what am I going to do with my future? Oh, money's running out. Oh, my family's turning against me. Oh, people are mocking me. Oh, no one will listen to me to the gospel. Oh, that's a time that you got to get mad at yourself for doing that. You got to get mad at the world. You got to get mad at the devil and pick up your sword and start Start to swing it for Jesus Christ. Not a, time, not a time and place to complain about school, about church, about work, about family, about money, about health. This is a time that you need to fight. You got to tell those things, you're not going to push me around anymore. Amen. Because you know what Satan's doing? He's watching you. He's watching on what makes you skip Bible reading. What makes you skip coming to church? Right. What makes you skip soul winning? He's watching that. And when he sees that, he says, Ah, then I'm going to keep using that chess piece. That's right. And he's going to use that chess piece to keep bullying you. See, you can maybe, maybe you can meet, uh, you can battle against Mr. Bully of some kind of sexual sin. You can beat up that bully. But, uh oh, here's this other bully. And this other bully is money lust. And then that bully named Money Lust is kicking you around. And you realize, and the devil realizes, so I'm going to keep using this chess piece. Oh, maybe that you're not going to skip church and you're going to do soul winning and read the Bible. 
So he can't use the chess piece of the world against you because he knows you're too spiritual. But then he realizes that when you didn't lead a soul to salvation that day, and that when people say, I don't like you, I'm leaving this church, or I'm unsubscribing you from the internet, or gossiping about the pastor or some brother and sister, and that discourages you, then Satan said, well, I'm not going to use this chess piece called world now because he loves Jesus. But this chess piece of spiritual smallness, I'm going to keep using this. And he'll use that to bully you. You, need, you know what you need to do? You need to stand up against every bully. Look, do you like to be pushed around? Do you like to be spin upon? Do you like to be trodden underfoot? Do you like Mr. Bully? Have his way with you. Make himself look like a champion. And you look like his footstool? Are you some little slave? Some bound slave to, to that Mr. Bully? You need to stand up, pick up a sword, and stab the enemy. You say, you're not going to shove me or push me around anymore. I don't know what it is, money lust, or a sexual lust, or if it's a result lust, or if it's a lust of technology, television, internet, or video games, or I don't know what it is, but you need to stand up to those bullies, and you need to take out that King James Bible, and you need to stab him once, and trust me, that bully's not going down with one stab. You need to stab him again, and you need to stab him again, and then he's not going to go down, so you need to chop his head off. Amen. Amen. You know what you need to do? You need to take out your sword, and don't think, oh, I just came to Sunday, I got the victory. No, you need to keep stabbing the devil by coming to church every Sunday and every Bible study and coming to street preaching and visitation. And you should tell the devil, thank you so much for attacking my life. You just yeah. made me come to every single event. Amen. Thank you so much for trolling inside our church today. We just got more riled up Ooh. now. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's right. Thank you so much for attacking us online. That means we know we're standing for the truth and it just got us more revved up to serve God. Yeah. Let the enemies attack and stab. It'll just rile us more. It'll just rile us up more up, fire us up more up, and we got to stand for Jesus Christ. I mean, you got to realize that, well, what if people, they leave you, you know, people misunderstand you and they mock you. Why would you let these enemies mock you, poke fun at you? I mean, they're going to leave you online. They're going to leave your church what are you going to do about all that stuff? Why, why won't you address it? Look at the book of Nehemiah again. Book of Nehemiah, right? In chapter 6. Chapter 6. Don't you hate that? Yeah, I hate it. You don't think I hate it? Of course I hate it. You don't think I know what stuff is online about me? <laughs> you think I like it? No, I don't like it. You think that I want to crush them with scripture? Sure, I sure can. And I will. And I would have. But you know what? Look at verse 1. Now it came to pass when Sambalit and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall. See, why would they attack me if I didn't build some wall yet, huh? If I built a wall that's a threat to them, they'll start attacking me, criticizing me online, criticize our church. And that there was no breach left therein. Uh-huh, there's no breach because you can't go around dispensationalism. Uh, that is so rock solid. Amen. You can't go around that King James Bible. Yeah. It's pure and perfect. It's rock solid. That's why these losers will try to find a 1% mistake or error in the King James Bible and thinks that can overthrow the rest of the 90 to 99% of the evidence. They will find one exception to the rule of dispensational salvation. And they will use that verse to overthrow the rest of dispensational salvation. You can't go around dispensationalism. You can't go around that King James Bible. You're all picking at little straws and 1% or one little nitpicky verses just to prove your entire doctrine. Right. Wow, good for you. I'm going to throw away this 90 to 99% just for this little 1%. Oh, just because you finally found something controversial from Pastor Kim online. Boom, I can prove to him to be a heretic. And you don't do it on the rest of our hundreds of videos right. we got hundreds it's like what over 2,000 videos you know over 2,000 you're gonna pick that one little one wow it shows how desperate you are Amen. we're going to look at verse 2 that Sambalit and Gisha sent unto me saying come let us meet together Sambalit and Gisha sent unto me saying come let us meet together in some one of the villages in the place of oh no but they thought to do me mischief. So here's Sanballat, here, here's Geshem, and they're saying, Pastor Kim, ring, 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 Pastor Kim, email, Dr. Kim, or whoever you are, 
they'll, they'll post, they'll post some, we liked, we like, I want to debate you. I like to ask you a question. Yeah, question. I've, I've looked at hundreds, I already know which one's a genuine question and which one's fake. I already yeah. seen enough of that. We like to do an interview. You know what they're trying to take me? Look at that verse. Let's go to the place of oh no. When it says oh no, that means oh no, you shouldn't go there. <laughs> Wait, let's go to oh no. Oh no. And you know what the Holy Spirit's saying? Oh no. Yes. Oh no. And that flesh is saying, oh yes. Oh yes. You know the verses. You know enough Greek yes. and Hebrew. You know enough intellectual arguments, even scientific, logical. Go ahead and crush them. What? To some loser who locks himself up in a basement yes. till his skin turns white? Amen. You know how silly that would make me look? <laughs> Dr. Gene Kim debunks. Some basement loser. Yeah. Who, 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 some guy who has only 13 views with a black Hebrew Israelite video or something like that. Some atheist who, who can't live a life, so then all he can do is just post blogs and nasty comments. Mm -hmm. Really? Dr. Gene Kim debunks. <laughs> what, some loser? Yeah. You know how foolish, you know, you know, Look at verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? You know what? I'm too busy doing a great work for Jesus Christ. You know what? I've got enough souls to, to lead to Jesus Christ for salvation. Enough people here in this room that I'm trying to disciple. Enough people here that I'm trying to answer their questions. Help them serve God. A sermon and a teaching to refresh your mind and body. I've got enough things to do for the Lord Jesus Christ in taking care of my own issues in my own life. Why would I unbalance myself, embarrass myself, hurt my own life, hurt pe good people in this church, hurt my loved one and my family by going to some simple plane of, oh no, just to crush some loser? That's good. Brush them off. Brush them off, man. I could care less. I'm doing a great work for Jesus Christ. I don't have time to waste with you. You know what I'm going to waste my time on? I got time to waste for Brother Jack. I got time to waste for Brother Christopher. I got time to waste for Sister Barbara. Time to waste for Brother Sean. I got time to waste for them. Well, I would not waste my time on some loser out there. That's why we're here. I got time to waste for people online, people online who have an honest question and want God to help yeah. them. Yeah. I've got people, honest people, online who have been deceived by some dumb video out there and they ask me an honest question and I answer them. I got honest people online to do that. I've got, I'm too busy to take care of those people. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sacrifice those beloved people and their soul's growth yes. just on some bedroom loser who's going to go to hell either way yeah. or if he right. saved, be naked at the judgment seat right. of Christ. Yeah. I got better things to do yeah. in my life. I got enough time to grieve and enough time to cry and pray for Brother Stan and Brother Jack and Brother Roger and Brother Francis and other people who are going through hardship. I got enough time to do that. Enough time for people online who are going through depression and hardship. I got enough time to do that one. I ain't going to waste some time debunking some bedroom basement loser who no one ever heard about until they picked up from our videos. Yeah. I don't have time to deal with those kind of people. I'm doing a great work for Jesus Christ. I'm not going to stop serving him just, from, just for some little toe to stomp on. I got enough time to spend for them. I mean, man, boy, it's tempting to my flesh, though. It is sure tempting to my flesh. Have you seen this video? Have you? And I go, yeah, I already know. I already know. But you know what? I just put them away. I just put them on a shelf because I got enough time for people to feed. Yeah. And you know what I notice? The Lord takes care of them. The Lord takes care of them. Because if there's a person out there who's genuinely seeking truth, you know what I notice? People who are genuinely seeking truth and want to mature in the Bible, they ignore those videos about me or they'll rebuke with comments against those people who posted videos against me saying, you know what, who are you to criticize that church? That church is doing a great work for Jesus Christ. You don't know any better. All you want to do is pick a fight. And you know what? If you look at those guys' videos, look at their videos. What kind of a work are they doing for Jesus Christ? All they want is to get attention by attacking somebody out there. If 
you know, if you're a person who posts videos just on attacking people, how are you feeding the sheep, getting them to become soul winner, street preacher, preaching against their sins and the world and the flesh? Why are you just picking out certain people you want to criticize? Because th these, these people may know so much Bible. So you feel like if you stomp them on one or two little things, just on one or two percent, you look like the smart guy. Pride. pride, absolute pride. You know one thing I learned after being nearly 10 years in the ministry? You know one thing I learned about people who come into church and people online and souls that I've talked to on the streets or houses online that I've knocked on? You know, I pull up all the arguments and you know what happens? If I don't argue, then they'll think I don't know Bible. And if I do argue, then they accuse me of, oh, that's just too much information. I think you're making it complicated. What, what, I can't win it either way. You know what the truth is? They just want to believe what they want to believe. Yeah. It's pride. Yeah, and I'm pride. including every Bible believer out there Amen. too. You Bible believers who are doing nothing for Jesus Christ, but just oh. posting YouTube videos, you guys are a fruitless ministry. There are souls going to hell, people who need to be fed and discipled. There are places to plant churches. There are so many things to do for Jesus Christ. You got a pastor, you got a church to support and help because they're suffering a lot. Come there are so on. many things to do for Jesus Christ. And you guys act all prideful. You pretend you're a King James yeah. onlyist. Come you on. pretend you're a dispensationalist. I hate it when you dub yourself Bible believer. And when you do that, and then you just nitpick on other genuine, honest, spirited, loving, Bible-believing Christians who are trying to help souls out there, and you pick on them just because of one or two little things so that you can look smarter than them, you are a pitiful disgrace. The only way you can become smart is to pick on other smart people on one or two things. You can't teach as much as they do, that's why. You're so dumb. You're so prideful. You're so arrogant. You're such a loser where you have, you're just bitter and mad, all isolated by yourself. No wonder no pastor wants, you, wants to have you in their church. Amen and amen. You don't think I know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what I'm talking about because I know what that knowledge will do to you. I sat under a church. Come on. I sat under preachers who I thought weren't smarter than me. I know that kind of stuff. Look, I know that nonsense. I've lived through that mess for years. It was easy to just nitpick Bible-believing teachers. It's easy to do that. But you know what that is? That is pride. That is arrogance. And thank God he taught me at least the common sense, the common sense that sit down and shut up, and maybe I can show you something more. Amen. And you realize I'm not, look, I'm not the only witness. Oh, you know, I love, and you name the Bible-believing pastor and teacher. But, and then you say, but this. Or, I don't, ag I disagree with, I don't like that. If I had some member doing that in this church, how can I train them, disciple them? How can we be unified together? No pastor would like to have you over. Does that mean every pastor is perfect? Are you kidding me? I'm a sinner like you. You don't think that out of hundreds, over 2,000 videos that we posted, you're not going to find a mistake anywhere. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Really? I must be God then. We're all imperfect people Amen. used by a perfect Savior <laughs> using a perfect book Amen. as best as we can. And God will honor and bless and use that. Amen. You know what you should do? I'll tell you when to criticize. I'll tell you when. When a pastor does something that's a major, that's a major sin or a major heresy, that's when you start to put your foot in the door. And by the way, how you can tell it's a major sin and a major heresy is if you're not the only one making a big deal about that. If you're the only one making a big deal about that, but other Bible believers who are pastors, who are leaders, who have prayed to the Lord, who have won souls and done something more for Jesus than you, if they don't think that's a major issue, I think you got a major problem. That's a sign of mental illness. I don't know if you knew that. It's a sign of mental illness when you're like all isolated by yourself and you don't have the common sense of other people out there and you make a big deal about something that other people don't make a big deal about. There's something wrong with you. Especially if those people are saved. Especially if those 
people believe the King James Bible is perfect, especially if those people believe in dispensationalism, especially if those people know a lot of the Bible, especially if those people respect and love and are connected with fellow Bible-believing ministers, not base, basement losers. There's something wrong with you. There is something seriously wrong with you. So you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep doing that great work for Jesus Christ and not care what those people think. And you know what? I feel, I mean this. I'm not saying this out of anger. I'm saying this out of love and pity for some of you. If some of you got caught away by some of those basement losers, ask them, by the way, FYI, ask them if they go to church. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ask them if they ever submitted before. That's right. Submitted, submitted, submitted before under a pastor. Instead, and ask them if they submitted, even if there's something their flesh disagreed with. Yep. Because trust me, when you stay in this church long enough, trust me, you're going to find something that I'm going to do that you're going to go, I don't know about. Or I don't know about that. You know what my best advice is? is? If it's not a major heresy or a major sin, leave it alone. Because trust me, this pastor is a sinner and he's going to slip up somewhere. What, you're going to make a big deal and leave the church because Pastor Kim came in 10 minutes later? Well, you're going to make a big deal because Pastor Kim said, Pastor Kim taught something about cats that a lot of people misunderstood and said, I got to throw away and kill my poor cat. For crying out loud, man. Crying out loud. Imagine at the judgment seat of Christ when God sent you a church and a pastor to spiritually feed you where you could get more gold, silver, precious stones at the judgment seat of Christ. God says, you know, if you stayed with that church, if you stayed with that, I mean, that guy's not perfect, but if you stayed with them a little longer, you could have learned a lot more things that would have helped you. You could have won souls. You could have preached, taught better, or done something for me. Why didn't you do that? You know what the silliest excuse you would be? I'm saving you people from embarrassment at the judgment seat of Christ with all of us Christians watching you. Because he taught something about a cat. He said something about, and then you, and then it's always something that some basement loser posts a video on that's the most controversial on. It's because of that. Don't embarrass yourself, please. Don't embarrass yourself. I'm trying to save you from a lot of trouble out there. You know what the best advice for you is with imperfect pastors? This is the best advice. If it's not a major sin or a major heresy, this is the best advice for you. Don't disagree and don't agree so easily. Did you hear what I just said? Don't you dare be a blind follower of Jim Jones, the cult leader. Besides, Jim Jones, he teaches major heresy, major sins. I think that's enough to leave. But if it's not major, and you find something that's a disagreement, then you know what you need to do? I'm not telling you to blindly agree, but I'm, not telling, but I'm also telling you to not to blindly disagree either. You know what you should do? Put it on a shelf. Peep, you know what Satan wants to do? He always wants to spark your flesh, yeah. the curiosity of your flesh. You know what the flesh wants? It wants to know. It wants to know. That's why Satan's greatest success was eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. He shall be as God. That is not just Bible believers' problem. That is all of mankind's problem. That's why higher education has damned this whole place to hell. You know why? Because it gives you knowledge that can feed your pride, that makes you look better, and you have the knowledge to justify anything right. that your flesh wants to feel, and you become a dangerous cult leader. You know what the Christian, the right attitude is? You put it on a shelf. You have a problem of rebellious. You have a problem of being rebellious. You have a problem of being impatient. And you have a problem of not, you know what your problem is? You need to learn patience. If there's a number one problem I've seen with Bible believing preachers and regular members is patience. You know what God's, how God brings a fruit? Long time, patience. Now, those who are discipled under me, won't you agree, aren't you at least a little bit grateful that if there was something Pastor Kim taught that I was like, uh, I don't know about that, that you were glad you didn't agree or disagreed yeah, easily, yeah. but you just put it on a shelf. Aren't you glad you've done that? Because when you've done that, then you notice that as you mature and grow more, then you're like, oh, now I see why he said it that way. Oh, now I get it this way and that way. You know why? Think about this. If you look, 
you got a problem. Why would God call pastors if they're, if they're babies? Why would God call pastors if they're babies? If they're a pastor, guess what? They're not a baby. If he's a Bible-believing pastor, he's not a baby. So guess what? You know as a member, you know what you are? You're the sheep. You're not the shepherd. You're the baby. You're the one who's supposed to be fed. Yeah. If You know what I'm talking about if you have kids. If you have kids and they act like a brat because they might be more into, uh, man, God forbid they'll be smarter than you. They know more math and science than you do. And they start to smart mouth against you as a parent. Doesn't that irritate the fire out of you? It should irritate the fire out of you. If you can understand that, why can't you think that in a spiritual sense? You spiritual baby, you. You spiritual baby, you. So you know what? If that's the case, you got to realize this. Even though it's, it, you, your flesh feels so persuaded and convincing, and convinced, you know what you should do? You know what? God put him, not me as a pastor. Correct? Right. If God says, Amen. God put that person, not me as a pastor, then you know what? I'm, you know what? God has a reason for that. That pastor's imperfect. Maybe he misunderstood something. Maybe there's something. But I know that it's not him. It's God. I'm going to look at what God wants, yes. not what pastor wants. And if that's what God wants, then that's going to be the leader. That's what I'm going to listen to. I'm going to be trained under. And maybe God will show me something a little more that I overlooked. Amen. Let's do it, brother. And if you do that, you be. it will change your life. I'm saying this out of ex I'm warning you people online. I'm warning you. If I got any knowledge, then glory be to God. But I'm going to tell you something. The only reason why is because at least I had the common sense to shut my mouth and to submit. Amen. I experienced that life before. And because of that, that's why there were pastors who trusted me to pastor a church and even recommended me. You need to learn that. You know what your flesh wants? It wants to be rebellious. It wants to be number one. It wants to be the pastor. If you're the pastor, why don't you start a church, huh? You know why you don't get anybody in your church? Because, see, they know you're an arrogant, prideful jerk. You know, why, you know why the only thing you can flee to, the only thing you can flee to in the Internet is the Internet? Because you got like-minded, prideful people who hate similar pastors like you do. So because of you find something to hate and criticize, you can get along. But if there's something that you believe and teach and love, guess what? You're going to find contradictions, aren't you? And then you're going to pick fight with each other. And guess what? Then you lost your friends and you're by yourself. I'm going to tell you one thing as I close this message is that I'm trying to tell you people because I love you people and I love people in this church and I love people out there around the world. I'm telling you one thing, man. I'm telling you one thing. When the devil starts attacking you and then when people start attacking you and your flesh and the world starts attacking, you know what you need to do? It's not a time to get depressed, to lose power, to give up hope. It's a time that you got to get riled up and more fired up. And, and when one enemy shoots your leg, you kill three more enemies. That's what you need to do. If some enemy just stabbed you, just shot you with a pistol, you take out a machine gun and take down a whole squad with you. If, if they're going to take me down, I'm going to take down at least 10 more for Jesus Christ. If, I, if the devil's going to take away my life, I'm at least going to chop off his foot so that he can hobble, so that some other Bible believer can chop and do, finish the job for me. I ain't going to go down without fighting. I, ain't gonna, I don't care how many people in this church will misunderstand me. People online will misunderstand me. They'll accuse me with false accusations. They don't think that I love them. I'll still love them enough to lose my limbs and keep preaching and teaching the truth Amen. just for their soul's Lord, sake. Lord, and more importantly, for more than their soul's sake, because my Jesus wants yes. that. Lord God, I only care what you want. So if I lose everybody here, I'm going to do what you want rather than other people want. You know why, Lord? Because you're going to bring in the people. Right. You're going to bring in the fruit. Not not my intelligence, not with, not, with, not with gimmicks, not with all kinds of interesting stuff. None of that, Lord. It's you. And Lord God, I'm going to trust in you to do that. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the truth of thy word. God, everyone's under attack today. Please protect them. You know how much I love them. And not just me. I'm sure there, there, are, there are people in this church who love them too, Lord. I pray we will encourage each other more than ever before. Lift up each other's spirits and keep fighting on for Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you. Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. King James onlyism is double standards. Now there's a false doctrine out there called dispensationalism. Yeah, I, I don't believe one saved always saved. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. But you don't want to get identified with the reproach of what really believing this Bible is all about. You know what these wicked left-wing liberal perverts want you to do? Legalizing the marijuana or homosexuality or if the whole entire world turns against the Lord. Is that person saved? Is that person on their way to heaven or hell? The common person has no thought of God in their mind. 
that people will leave the church over the color of the carpet. What's wrong with our churches? Why don't we have a closer walk with Jesus? Why isn't everybody running around like little Jesus and shouting and screaming and hollering? That thing you look in the mirror, it don't want to go street preaching. It don't want to read the Bible. It don't want to pray. It wants to watch TV and a bunch of other junk. A lot of you don't have it because you're lazy. That's why you don't have it. Because you won't work. That's why. Don't you know the Bible says, Whoa! Unto the wicked! And I'll tell you, Jesus Christ loved you and God. He came down here, put up with your dirty ways. The wages of sin is death. When you offer somebody a gospel track, if uh, you're walking away and you see them throw it on the ground, that's not because they're afraid of what's in it. They know what's in it. No matter where you are today, turn to God and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God Almighty got me through and got me through for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years. You mess with that book, honey, I'll mess with you. Blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the Man. man God, yeah. our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah.